Welcome to another video. Today I'm starting yet another project because I'll be taking a vented cylinder out, a heat only boiler out and replacing it with a system boiler and an unvented cylinder. I also have some pipe work to do because someone started the work already. So what happened here, they hired a plumber who said he would install a new installation in copper and they quickly realized that he was putting plastic in and only leaving copper ties to radiators so they said no thank you we're not interested and this is the existing boiler heat only Worcester RI now I don't know what size pipe or comes to it because it's all buried in the walls or hidden and the distance is roughly about 15 to 18 meters from the gas meter so I'll have to put a new boiler and test pressure so if it's not adequate I'll have to upgrade the pipe or but since uh, my heating requirement on this house is around 8 kilowatts and for hot water reheat times I'll be okay with around 18-20 kilowatts. I'm only putting an 18 kilowatt system boiler. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the loft and I'm going to isolate supply to the cold water storage cistern and a header tank for central heating and then I'll drain the central heating and I'll drain the hot water cylinder and remove the lot, remove everything that's in the loft, remove all the pipe work there and reconnect it at this level. This is the main cold water storage cistern. Those two pipes is a hot fit and cold fit. So someone marked that for us, so that's nice. That's the main supply. So we can turn it off and remove it. And then there's a header tank just behind it for central heating. So I've got all the pipe work that I need now in the cylinder cover, so that's my domestic hot water, that is my balanced cold, up here is my mains supply, on this side I've got my return from the cylinder, so that pipe goes straight to the boiler with no teeth on it anymore, there used to be towel rails on it connected by I reconnected them. This is temperature and pressure relief that I run under the floor and I've terminated it outside the building. Flow from the boiler, again that pipe goes directly to the boiler with no teeth. And this is central heating flow to which I reconnected two towel rails and you can see one of them. This is actually going to the return and the flow for the towel rail is here so I have to reconnect it to this pipe. Behind that wall, I'll show you as well. This is domestic hot water return, this is the return pipe work from the cylinder that goes straight back to the boiler with no teeth and it used to have teeth going, the returns going coming from tower rails that I removed. This is a flow from the boiler again, no teeth all the way to the boiler going to the cylinder and this is central heating flow and central heating return where I reconnected. I had to redo those pipes, you've got two new pipes going here to the bathroom right there. I'll show you, I also had to drill through the steel right there for a radiator pipe work flow and return and, and also temperature and pressure relief pipe work from the cylinder. I'm installing that radiator on a dot and dab wall and I went to Screwfix and I got those dot and dab fixings for the first time and they seem to be really good. Core fix they called. They come with this, that looks like a standard wall plug and you pre-drill the wall with 10 mil drill bit. Then you nail this kind of a metal core to bridge the gap between the plaster board and the solid wall behind.
hot's connected, cold water is connected, so I have to connect temperature and pressure and temperature relief valve and flow and return and that's it. But I can feel the cylinder with water now already. Now this is always a scary moment because it used to be a vented system and now we're pressurizing it. I'm gonna go and have a look around if there are no problems actually. And I've got a first victim of pressurizing the system, toilet. Look, completely flooded. Yeah, you need to be careful when you pressurize those systems. Those things can happen. All pipe work to the cylinder is done. Cylinders full of water, so hot and cold are working now because I've got immersion heater connected. So it's only the controls that need to be wired, zone valves and controls for a cylinder. As you probably noticed, I've got a feeling loop for central heating here. I also have central heating expansion vessel here and a pressure gauge on top of the uh, expansion vessel connection right here and pressure relief. I'm not gonna be using that pressure relief, I'm gonna be using boiler pressure relief, so I'm gonna cut this pressure relief off. And yeah, I prefer to put expansion vessel here and a feeling loop as well and a pressure gauge. So in the utility room where the boiler is, there'll be only be flow return and gas in the boiler and that's it. In case it isn't obvious, we are uh, on the ground floor now and the cylinder is on the second floor. Although we are on the ground floor outside, there's no galleys, no drainage and I can't put soak away because it's concrete as well and they didn't want me to break the concrete so I'll have to put a pump that will pump pressure relief and condense take it up across and there's a sink just on the other side there's a programmer here which I'm very happy about that it's by the boiler not by the cylinder because that means I will have hot water on central heating on and hot water off here three wires that I will need apart for life neutral and earth to run my NTC from the cylinder back to the boiler that's two wires and a switched live from the boiler to fire up the zone valves to move the diverters for hot water priority if that was upstairs quite often you only get live neutral earth and a switched live and that wouldn't have been enough so thanks God for the programmer here so probably a good call to remove this boiler because it doesn't look like it's been serviced so there are leaks from the sump on the bottom it's this figure, it's, it's just look at this here and also signs of leaks from the top of the heat exchanger so yeah, if you're thinking of a new boiler Worcester, yeah? Installer's choice, mate Goodbye Worcester Got five wires going to the airing cupboard plus air so that's all I need, so that's excellent What's not so excellent is that both of those are where the boiler is going so I need to see if I can move them move the boiler figure something out so earth neutral life that will go to the boiler switched life from the boiler to zone valves to operate them as diverters NTC and NTC going to the cylinder that's all the wiring I need Got my pump connected and from here the pump will pump condense across the room to the other side above the door. Now the pump comes with two wires and I've got them here in the trunking. One is just live neutral and earth and the other one is a wire connected to a switch on the float. 
So if the pump fails, it will cut off power to the boiler and to central heating system so it doesn't operate, doesn't flood the room. This is our neutral and, and live going to the boiler from the pre-wired cable. So live, I'm gonna disconnect it and connect it to one side of the float switch and then the other side of the float switch will go into the live of the boiler. So my little junction box is done, it's quite busy and I've marked DC voltage, direct voltage. So hopefully no one mixes the wiring in the future. And now I'm gonna connect Earth, life and neutral for my uh, Honeywell thermostat receiver and open therm. I'm gonna connect those and that's all the wiring here completed. Then I have to go to the cylinder cupboard and do the wiring there. The wiring's completely finished and let me talk you through how the system works. This system is an X-Plan, Intergas X-Plan uh, hot water priority system. And what we have here is on hot water we have a standard two port valve one with five wires so it's normally closed when there is demand for hot water it opens and on heating we've got a three wire normally open valve and it only has neutral life and earth and when it's energized it closes so the whole system in the resting position is open to central heating and central heating when it's on and it's controlled by an open third thermostat uh, the valves are not energized. The boiler just fires and central heating uh, works. There's also a bypass here. When there is demand for hot water, however, both valves are energized and the way it works, the boiler itself sends a switched signal. So unlike on an S-plan or, or a Y-plan where the valves fire the boiler, in here when there's hot water demand, it's the boiler, in this case intergas, that sends a switched life to the zone valves and it opens the zone valve for hot water. That valve in turn sends a switched life on an orange to a central heating valve and closes the central heating valve. So when there is hot water demand, central heating is automatically closed and that valve opens. Even if there is a demand for central heating, it's being ignored and the boiler will do hot water only. The whole idea of that is that the boiler, intergas boiler, can fire on two different outputs, one for heating and the other one for hot water. In our case, I've got two coils linked together and this uh, three-story house, the heating uh, requirement is roughly about seven kilowatts. So I can set my boiler at seven kilowatts for heating, 18 kilowatts for hot water. Now, how it is wired? Intergas boiler has a PCB that's split into direct current on the left-hand side or volt three contacts on the left-hand side and alternating current on the right hand side. And you've got a pin 9 and 10 on the board where you connect an NTC from the cylinder so you can set the hot water temperature straight on the boiler. And that was what I wanted to do here. Unfortunately, they couldn't deliver the NTC to my address for four days now. So I have to wire it on the cylinder stat. If you are not using NTC, if you have open connection between 9 and 10, terminal 9 and 10 on the PCB, of the intergas boiler, it will fire on hot water and it will fire on preset kilowatt output for hot water. If you close that connection, the boiler will not fire on the hot water demand. So it's wired completely opposite to what you would normally do for hot water. The programmer is wired to common and normally closed. When normally closed opens on a demand, it opens the circuit and it fires the boiler. So the programmer is connected through this junction box to connections nine and 10 on the PCB volt free. And when it opens it, opens connection on normally closed when there's demand, it should fire the boiler. I also have my cylinder thermostat connected on common and normally closed to the same connections. And those wires, you can see them here on the last two connections right here. And uh, they connected in uh, parallel. Parallel? Parallel, well. Not in series, the other one. And if any of those connections, cylinder stat or the programmer are closed, the boiler will not fire. We need to have the programmer asking for hot water so it opens normally closed connection. Cylinder stat asking for hot water so it opens normally closed connection. And then the boiler will fire on my hot water preset demand. In my case, 18 kilowatts, because I've got an 18 kilowatt boiler, I can't set it any higher. So what happens, how, how it works? When the connection on 9 and 10 on PCB on the boiler on direct current side is open, so the cylinder stat is calling for heat, my programmer is calling for heat for, well, for heating for hot water, 
sends a signal to fire for hot water. The boiler sends a 230 volt alternating current switched light from a pin 5 on the right hand side of the PCB to the overheat thermostat. If overheat thermostat is in a closed position, normally closed position, so it hasn't been triggered, it hasn't tripped, it will in turn send that switched light to my hot water two port zone valve and it will send it to two wires to the brown wire to open the valve and at the same time the brown wire is linked with the grey wire and that grey wire when it's energized it sends a switched light on an orange wire to the two port valve normally open valve for central heating and it closes that valve once hot water is satisfied again the two port zone valve is de-energized for hot water so it closes and two port valve is also de-energized for central heating so it opens because it's normally closed valve it's the reverse of this valve and that's pretty much it and that allows you to have proper setting of your boiler for central heating 7 kilowatts in our case and maximum you can get to the cylinder 18 kilowatts in our case and you can run the system efficiently it's best to use boilers that have two switched life and there are some boilers out there i think ideal vogue has two switched lives as well so you can send switched lives to the boiler and switch it on two different outputs again usually smaller one for heating higher one for hot water and also the one thing that's uh, quite tricky with intergas is the fact that i'm mixing direct current and alternating current in one wiring center here and one wiring center downstairs so i've marked my wires here on that wiring center so whoever opens it to troubleshoot it in the future to hopefully don't mix those wires because then they'll have to get a new pcb if they blow it i've also marked this x plant priority domestic hot water now i'm going to commission the boiler and the most important thing for me is checking gas pressures because the pipe is not visible it's buried under the floor in the walls I've got no idea what size the pipe is. Gas pressures are fine. 19 millibar is exact. Well, it's, it's really good. That's my maximum rate combustion readings here. CO2 9.1, so from the top of my head on the minimum rate, we'll be looking at 8.8, 8.7 8 maybe. So I press the spanner and the minus button now. And I'm getting 8.8 .8 CO2. So, actually no adjustment necessary, I can leave it at that. The boiler's set. Now let's see the reheat times. We've got incoming mains at 15 degrees and hot water from the cylinder at 20. So, let's assume we've got water in the cylinder at about, well, let's call it 20 degrees. And we'll, let's see how long it will take to raise the temperature to 60 of 200 liters using 18 kilowatts. Right, let's go. Start. And this is what happens when you mix direct current with alternating current. I obviously did that on purpose for the sake of this presentation. That's unexpected. Thousands of tears later. The game's on! With loads of air. Later that same evening. Right, the boiler stopped. 25 minutes to reheat 200 liters of water from right now is 14 degrees and I'm gonna turn the hot water we'll see how hot it gets so I got 58 degrees in 25 minutes from 15 degrees once I've got my NTC we'll run the test again and get more accurate results and the very last thing was to power flush the system and I find that vented system they really do need power flushing when I convert them I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon Thanks for watching. Cheers guys. Bye.